them being awakened at 2 in the morning to hear the news that their son had been in a car wreck. And all they knew was that there had been a bad wreck. Didn't know if his son had lived or died. Didn't know anything about what was going on. Jerry Clower said that as they had, he and his wife were driving toward that place that they began to just pray and finally Jerry said he looked over at his wife and he said if our son is alive I will praise his holy name and if our son is dead I will praise his holy name it's the same thank you thank you wow if you have your Bible this morning I invite you to turn with me to Psalm 119 Psalm 119 the scripture says that the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword and it is able to divide bone and marrow and soul and spirit the word of God is powerful to get into the depths of a person and change their life. Jack shared with us incredible testimonies of people who have come to know the Lord as their Savior because of the simple placement of a Bible in a place where someone might pick it up and read it. And because they picked it up and read it, they were saved. Their life was changed. We've been talking for the last several weeks about once we've asked Christ into our heart, that we need to become more like Christ and that the key to becoming more like Christ is the Word of God. And so we've talked about having a quiet time. We've talked about how to apply Scripture to our lives. We've talked about how to do Bible study. But now we come to talk about one of the other key elements of getting the Word of God into our life. And that is we've got to get it in there, but we've got to get it in there where it'll stay. I remembered hearing the words and as I was preparing this message, I, I could hear myself uh, singing and saying the words of the song. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Y'all know that song? Down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to do what? To stay. I want it to get in there and I want it to stay. We need to get the Word of God into our heart, but we need to get it in there to stay. Do you know how that occurs? It occurs as we memorize Scripture. It occurs as we come and hide God's Word in our heart. Psalm 119 is one of the great chapters in all of the Bible. Psalm 119 has, I believe, 179 verses. Donna, that'd be a good one for you to learn there. Amen? Praise God. Now listen, I'm picking on Donna. Donna has already memorized the whole book of James and is memorizing some of the book of Acts. So we can pick on Donna a little bit. Amen. Uh, I tell you right now, she's hiding God's Word in her heart. She knows that. But when you get tired of them other things, Psalm 119 would be a really long, good one to learn. Amen. And, um, and that's cool. We're challenging ourselves to get the Word of God into our lives. Psalm 119 is nothing but about the Word of God. And the writer comes to tell us how much he loves the Word of God. But today I'm going to read for you five passages. One with three verses and then four others, just one verse. And in each one, the author, the writer of the book of Psalm 119, tells us how important it is to get the Word of God into us. Four of the times he says, I will not forget. I will not forget. That says to me, I'm going to memorize it. I'm going to hide it in my heart. Today we come to talk about getting the Word of God down in my heart to stay. Please stand with me as we honor the Word of God. Psalm 119. We're going to read a number of different verses. So fasten your seat belts. Here we go. Verses 9 through 11. The psalmist says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. With all my heart... I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. 
Your word I have treasured. If you have a King James Version, I believe it says hidden. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. And then verse 16. Excuse me, I flipped the page too fast there. Verse 16 says, I shall delight in your statutes. I shall not forget your word. Verse 61, the author says, The cords of the wicked have encircled me, but I have not forgotten your law. Verse 83, the psalmist says, Though I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, that means I'm old and cracked and wrinkled and brittle. He says, I do not forget your statutes. And then verse 93 says, I will never forget your precepts, for by then you have revived me. Thank you so much. Today I want to come and talk to us about getting the Word of God down in our hearts and down in our hearts to stay. So there are three things that I want to talk to you about. Three things that I want to talk to you about. First of all, I want to talk to you about some common excuses for not memorizing Scripture. Some common excuses for not memorizing Scripture. Now I'm going to tell you right now. I did not come up with this material. I'm borrowing this from a gentleman named Billy Beecham. Billy Beecham came when I was a youth minister many, 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 many years ago. Billy's about my age. and uh, But he has worked with young people for many years. This is his material teaching teenagers how to memorize the Word of God and why it's important. And listen, there isn't anything better, so I'm stealing it from him. Amen? And so y'all can call him later and say, our preacher stole it. He didn't do as good as you would have, but it wasn't bad. Amen? Alright, three common excuses uh, for not memorizing Scripture. Here's the first one we hear a lot. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. Hit that button one time there, will you? There it is. I don't have enough time. Now, how many of you have ever used that excuse? I want you to hold your hands up today. We're going to get involved here. How many of you have ever said that about memorizing Scripture? I don't have enough time. You saw mine went up real fast. Amen. I've done that. I don't have enough time. Do you know what I don't have enough time really translates into? That's not important enough for me. Okay? You know what I've discovered in my life? I have time for everything I want to do. Did you hear that? I'll say it again. I have time for everything I want to do. Okay? So what you're saying, if you're saying I don't have enough time is, is that it's not important enough. Now, the scripture says, in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, says, Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time. My friends, you know what I've discovered? You have time to memorize scripture. You have time. You can do it in all sorts of ways. I used to drive my wife crazy because in our house, when we lived in Odessa, Texas, I decided that the best time for me to be working on scripture memory was while I was standing and gawking at the mirror early in the morning. And so, on the mirror at our house were scripture verses all around that mirror. Until it got so full that she finally made me take them down. Amen. You can work on scripture memory many, many ways, many, many times. And I want to say to you, if it's important to you, you have time. Okay? Here's the second one. This is the biggest one I hear from us. And when I say us, I'm talking about anybody who is 55 years of age and older. I'm not going to make you raise your hands and say I'm part of that bunch. Alright? But uh, I know that we say this. Here's what we say. I can't memorize. I can't memorize. Philippians 4.13, the Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is that verse true? Amen. Hello. Uh, wake up, y'all. Is that verse true? Amen. It is. So then, I can't memorize means we don't trust God. Right? Hello? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can memorize scripture through Christ who strengthens me. Okay? 
We can memorize scripture. I, I want to say this to you. Sometimes it's not that I can't. It's that I'm not motivated to. So I just want to bring up a thought. Let's just pretend. Now I can tell you right now. It's not happening with me. But, but it, you know, if you ever knew somebody. But let's just say that we had a philanthropist come and become a part of our church. And he was a multimillionaire. And let's just say that this guy believed that memorizing scripture was very important. And let's just say that he decided that every person that memorized scripture, he'd give them $1,000 for every scripture they could quote by memory. How many of y'all think you could memorize scripture? I'm telling you right now, I'd get me some. Amen? I'd memorize them real fast. Right? Because he'd give me a thousand bucks every time I did it's a matter of motivation. Church, we need to understand that when the Word of God gets turned loose in us and it gets in there and God uses it to work in us, it can do mighty things. And so the excuse I can't memorize, not really good. Here's the third excuse. This is the most true excuse that there is. I'm lazy. Hello? I'm lazy. That's me. Okay, I'm lazy. Uh, you know, it takes effort. It takes work. It takes concentration. It, it, it takes something to get that done. I'm lazy. The, the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, How long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Your poverty will come in like a vagabond and your need like an armed man. You know what the, the writer of Proverbs is saying? He's saying quit being lazy and get busy. Amen? Now, those are the excuses. Now, let's get to why we need to do it. Number two. Number two in your outline. The importance of Scripture memory. The importance of Scripture memory. There are four things that will happen when you and I begin to memorize Scripture in our heart. The first one. It helps us to resist temptation, to sin, and it helps to build purity in our life. It helps us to resist temptation to sin, and it helps us to build purity in our life. Psalm 119, we read these verses a moment ago, verses 9 through 11. The writer says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to what? Your word. And then he says, With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander away from your commandments. Your word I have treasured, I have hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Now I want you to think for a moment. In, in Matthew chapter 4, we read the story of Jesus going out and, and, and fasting for 40 days and nights. And when he finished fasting, the very next thing that occurred was he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Hello, are you with me? Okay, and Satan came to Jesus and the very first temptation that Satan gave to Jesus was what? Somebody tell me. What? Now that was the third one. What was the first one? The bread. I heard it. Somebody said bread. He said, Jesus, those rocks, don't they look like bread? Have y'all ever have y'all ever had hot, homemade, fresh? <clears throat> this is awful to do right to you before lunch, but glorious homemade bread. <clears throat> Excuse me. Woo! I'm sorry, Dean. Sorry, dude, didn't mean to scare you there. Hot homemade bread. That made me so hungry I just got all gagged up there. Amen. <clears throat> Hot homemade bread, I am telling you right now, there is nothing in the world that smells better than hot homemade bread. Can you imagine? You haven't eaten in 40 days. Alright? And, and, and they, they, they get Jesus there and they, Satan says, look, can you see that? Those rocks, they look just like a loaf of bread. Jesus, can you just smell it? Amen? How did Jesus battle that temptation? Somebody tell me. He said, 
No, the Bible says, he, now if you read it in the Bible, it says, Jesus looked at Satan and said, It is written that man won't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Now, my question is, how did Jesus know that it said that in the Bible? He memorized it. Thank you. Okay? He memorized it. By the way, he helped write it. Right? He helped write it. He knew what it said. But he hid it in his heart. When the temptation came, he, he didn't give in. Alright? And so Satan then took him and, and did a second one. How did Jesus respond? It is written. The Bible says. Then when the third one came, Jesus responded. It is written. How do you overcome temptation in your life? How do you remain pure in your life? Memorizing scripture. I read a story about a man who found out that they were training dogs in an obedience school. These dogs were going to be dogs that would take care of property, huge estates, very, very wealthy people with lots of money and lots of stuff. And they trained those dogs to do all kinds of things. And the very last test to see if a dog was going to be a good guard dog or not. They would take the dog and they would intentionally not give the dog any food for several days. And the dog would be extremely hungry. And then they would bring the dog into a room and they would sit and, and, and the, the master would command the dog to sit and to stay. Sit and stay. And then they would bring in a freshly cooked steak. And set it right below the nose of the dog. The dog had been told, sit, stay. If the dog ate the meat, he failed the test. Okay? And he did not become a guard dog. If the dog, if the dog refused to eat because the master had said, sit and stay. Now listen, if that dog could talk, that dog might have been saying, you know what man, you starved me and then you stick meat under my nose and you don't want me to eat it? Are you out of your mind? Right? Chomp, chomp, chomp. The man said it was amazing. There was one thing that was consistently true with every single dog that passed. And that was that the dog had its head up high and its eyes focused on the master. Amen? How do you overcome temptation to sin? Because listen man, we're like that dog. We're hungry. You know, some temptation comes along. We want to give in. If we've memorized scripture, we know the command of the master. The command is sit and stay. And if we will hold our head up and keep our eyes on the Master, God will give us the strength to overcome even the toughest of things. Jesus said, when the tough temptation came, it is written. It's important to memorize Scripture because it, it helps us to maintain purity. It helps us to resist temptation. And then second of all, it's important because it fills our mind with God. It's important because it fills our mind with God. May I say to you, you are what you think about. You are what you think about. You will become uh, what the things are that you think about most of the time. Okay? I heard a fellow say, if you eat fat, greasy food, you become a fat, greasy dude. And, and the reason for that is because you think about that all the time. I love fat, greasy food. And just it goes from there. Amen? Okay, I'm just saying. Uh, you know, if you think about it, you do it. How do you change what you think about? Well, it comes to what you put into your mind. The old saying is, garbage in, garbage out. Okay? So we need to get Scripture in. One of the best things we can do to get our mind focused on the Lord, to get our mind focused on the things of the Lord, is to memorize Scripture. To be hiding God's Word in your heart. And then third, 
It helps us in our witnessing. If you memorize scripture, it will help you in your witnessing. Let me tell you something. Uh, you need to be uh, uh, being a witness for the Lord. The Bible tells us that. One of the things that will help you is to, is to know scripture by memory. Now... Let me tell you what I did. When I was a teenager, our youth minister challenged us to know how to share our faith and to share our faith using the four spiritual laws. That's a tract that was developed by Campus Crusade for Christ International. It's an incredible tract. Um, and I made myself memorize that tract. You know how I know one of the ways that I can share the gospel is? By using the four spiritual laws. Because I memorized it when I was a teenager. And all those scriptures are still here. You know why? Because I made sure I got them. I learned them. And they're there when I need to share Christ with someone. Now, if you can't do anything else, I will teach you a scripture verse that you can use one verse of scripture and share the gospel with it and people can get saved. Okay? Romans 6.23. And I've done that before. We'll do it again at some point. Sharing scripture is important and it helps you if you've memorized it when you witness. Okay? And then fourth. Fourth. It enables the Holy Spirit to teach and guide you in your daily decisions. Let me read to you what the scripture says. The scripture says in John 14, 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things, and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. The scripture says, the promise of God is, that the Holy Spirit will come, and He will teach us and guide us. How does He do that? By bringing to our remembrance what's in there. Now here's the question. If you don't put something in, what is he going to bring up when you need help? Hello? Nothing. Because there's nothing there. You're a fan of I Love Lucy so, so you've been putting in lots of I Love Lucy shows. And you're a fan of MASH, and so you've been putting in a lot of MASH. Guess what the Holy Spirit has to draw on? Father Mulcahy! <laughs> you want Him to help you? You want Him to guide you? Give Him something to work with. Hide Scripture in your heart. Fill your mind with the things of God. Hide scripture in your heart. Then, when the Holy Spirit needs something, He can call it to your mind. Why? Because you put it in there ahead of time. By the way, it's probably good to learn some that apply to the areas where we're tempted the most. Amen? If you're tempted a lot in an area, memorize some scripture about that one. And that way the Holy Spirit has some ammunition. Let me tell you something. A mind without scripture is like a gun without bullets. They're not very good. You know, you have a gun, you don't have any bullets in it. What are you going to do when a robber comes to your house? Beat him to death with the gun? Right? you got to have bullets in that gun. The Holy Spirit's ammunition is the Word of God. And it's the Word of God that we've hidden in our hearts so that He can call it out when He needs it. Amen? So we need to memorize scripture. Now let's get down to the how-tos real fast. I've got nine minutes. Can I do this in nine minutes? Number three, how to memorize scripture. Fasten your seatbelt. Seven things. Now some of these don't take a whole lot of time to talk about. Alright? First one, set a goal and a pace. Set a goal and a pace. I knew some guys when I was in seminary that got gung-ho about memorizing Scripture. I must tell you, I was never gung-ho. I did it, but I, I was never one of those guys. I knew some guys that would try to memorize two, three, four, five, whatever, a week, one a day. May I say to you, that's insane. If you can do that, do it. Get after it. I can't do that. Now, I can memorize stuff pretty fast. But keeping it, getting it to where it stays in here, 
That doesn't work good for me. So find a pace. Here's the pace we have asked you through our Awanas. And I praise God for our Awana ministry. We've got children that every week are learning the Word of God. They're hiding the Word of God in their hearts. And they've challenged us as a church to be memorizing Scripture. And I thank God for that. Brother, I tell you what, for the first time in a while, I've been back making sure that every month I can quote that Scripture verse. Now, now I get the addresses wrong, and I'm going to deal with that in a little bit. But, uh, uh, you know, we need to be hiding Scripture in our heart. They're asking you to learn one a month. Now, except for this month where Willard the Maniac picked out one that's 94 verses long, and that's not quite that bad. But uh, it's going to be a little tougher for February. But, brother, we're going to get it, aren't we? We're going to get it. Amen? We're going to hide God's Word in our heart. Okay? We're asking you to just learn a verse or two every month. Now, I don't know about y'all. I can do that. Right? I can do that. That's cool. Okay? So set a pace that's realistic. Something that you can do. The second thing, know the context. Know the context. Listen to me. I've known some people that could quote Scripture, but they have no idea what some of those verses really are talking about. You need to know what's before and after that verse. You need to make sure that if you share that verse, you share it in the context that the Word of God has placed it. Alright? Know the context. Third thing, stick to one translation. Stick to one translation. Man, I've known people that could quote to you out of the King James and New American Standard, NIV and this and that. But sometimes they have trouble because it all kind of gets jumbled up on you. Amen? Before I started learning Scripture in New American Standard Version, that's what I've used all my life. New American Standard. I had memorized a couple in King James. You know what still happens to this day? Those two that I learned in King James and then in New American Standard, I still get them all messed up. Okay? Pick a translation, stay with it. Pick one that you like. NIV, Holman Christian Standard, New American Standard, King James, whatever you like, stay with that one. Do them all out of that one, okay? It'll help you not get messed up. The fourth one. The fourth one. Now this is where we're going to spend a couple of minutes. But the fourth one is, learn, it one, learn the verse by one word or one phrase at a time. Joshua 1.8 One of the first verses I learned was Joshua 1.8 Joshua 1.8 is this long It goes this way This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth But you shall meditate on it day and night So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it For then you will make your way prosperous And then you will have success Joshua 1.8 now when I looked at that verse and I started thinking, man, I can read that verse a thousand times, I'm never going to get that verse. And then it dawned on me that that verse had five phrases. The first phrase is, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. I could learn that. The second phrase, but, you have to learn them key words, see. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. The third one starts with so that. So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. The, third, the fourth one starts with for then you will make your way prosperous. The fifth one starts with and then you will have success. I learned it one phrase at a time. Learned them all, put them all together. Guess what? I can quote that for you. How do you do it? Learn it a phrase at a time. Some of you may need to even do a word at a time. That's cool. When we had to memorize Philippians 4.8, I struggled with that one for so long. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is... H. Honorable. Thank you. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right... Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. That's nine phrases. Okay? Took me forever and I still got hung up on honorable. Okay? Honorable is always the one that hangs me up. H. But I learned them by learning. Finally, brethren, I didn't have to worry about that. But then there were there are six whatevers and then three other things. Okay? (laughs) 
Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute. If there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Tear it apart. Learn it one part at a time. Guess what? You can do it. Make cheat notes. You know what I did? I had a piece of paper. I carried it with me for weeks. And you know what it had on it? T-H-R-P-L-G. True, honorable, right, lovely, a pure, lovely, good repute. Had to have cheat notes. And then, anything excellent, anything worthy of praise, dwell in these things. You can do it. Okay? Tear it apart. Now, this is where the work gets there. You have to do that. You have to work on it all the time. Okay? Until you get it. You know what's cool? Once you get it, you get it. Alright? Tear it apart. Look at it a piece at a time until you get it. Now, there are three more things real fast. Number five. Try for perfection. Listen to me. If you learn Scripture in a shoddy way, you'll never know whether you really have it or not. You need to learn it word perfect. You need to learn it word perfect. Whatever translation you're going to use, make yourself do it perfect every time. Learn it perfect. Do it good. Listen, the Lord doesn't want us to do things halfway. Do them right. Okay? The next thing. Remember the reference. Remember the reference. Now, Holly will tell you that I can mess up the reference, man. Okay? I, I still mess it up. My brain is getting old enough now that I mess stuff up bad. Okay? Miss Holly will tell you that I can mess that reference up horribly bad. Remember the reference. Here's how you do it. When you write the verse down where you're going to be reviewing it and looking at it and doing it for a while, write the reference above it. What? And below it. Good. There you go. Some of y'all are doing that. Okay? So you say, Joshua 1.8, this book of the law, yada, yada, yada. Joshua 1.8. Then when you do it again, you go, Joshua 1.8. You say, Preacher, why do I do that? Because it's twice as hard to learn the reference as it is to learn the verse. I'm telling you. Learn the reference. Now you say, why is that important? Well, I'm telling you. I don't want to just get up here and say the Word of God says. I want to get up and say, John 3.16 says. There's authority in knowing the address. Remember the reference. One last thing. Review, review, review. Somebody tell me. I'm going to let you guess. How long do I have to review a verse of Scripture until I will finally pretty well own it in my life? Who has an idea? John. Yes. And if you do the math on that, if you do it every day for 48 times, that's about seven weeks. Okay? Seven weeks. Billy Beecham, in the book that I used to get this material, said eight weeks. Do you know what I found for my life? Ten to twelve weeks. Why? Because I'm thicker skull. Okay, I want to ask you. If I said right now, I need you to stand up and say John 3.16. Raise your hand. I promise I won't call on you. How many of you could say, I could stand up right now and say John 3.16. Raise your hand up. Okay, I want to ask you something. Those of y'all that raised your hands, that is so awesome. How many of y'all learned that in a Sunday school class when you were a little kid? Okay, and somebody held you accountable. Who was that? Your Sunday school teacher? Right? And they made you say it over and over and over, 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 over. Until now, where is it? It's hidden in my heart. Okay? Church, listen. I, I can tell you from experience. I have been preaching the gospel, thank God, for 28 years. In fact, longer than that, 30-something years. 
I cannot tell you how many times because I hid God's word in my heart when I needed a verse the Holy Spirit could call it and I could quote it. Okay? The scripture says God's word is living. It's alive. It is active. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. And it will divide bone and marrow and soul and spirit. Listen, it gets down on the inside and does what it needs to do to cause us to be different. I want to be different. I want to be a man that is growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and in my walk with Him. The way we're going to do that is to memorize Scripture. I challenge you. Let's take this challenge. Let's do it consistently and let's do it well to the glory of God in our lives. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we're challenged to learn it, to get it inside, and to get it there where it will stay. Lord, help us to see the importance of getting your word in us. God, do that. Do that. Change us, God. Do your work in us because we hide your word in our heart. Lord, if there's someone here today they've never invited Christ into their life, Lord, I pray that they would do that right now. Father, if there are others that need to make some kind of commitment, Lord, I pray that by your Holy Spirit you would move in this place in this moment. God, have your way. Lord, we thank you for that. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. If you're here.